Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fernando. I'm a senior software engineer uh, at Red Hat. I work in the networking services team, uh, mainly on network management. And so today, my idea of this talk is to uh, show you a little bit what is the present and uh, the present state and the, our future uh, our future strategy for network management in enterprise Linux. Um, also, I would like a little bit uh, that, that, that you, you could participate because I love to hear uh, community complaints, especially uh, community complaints about the software that I do. <laughs> so please, if at some moment you have any question, you have your network manager crash or something like that, please raise your hand and we can discuss it. All right, so this is the agenda and yeah, all the stuff. Uh, long ago, when I was a kid, uh, before 2004, network manager didn't exist. And what we had is basically if config, um, if, if uh, network scripts, and basically you needed to uh, create a bunch of um, bash scripts everywhere. And I know this because when I started learning uh, networking and how to use Linux, et cetera, et cetera, I say, hmm, I want to be a pro, so I'm not going to use Network Manager. Okay, don't do that, right? I end up with a single laptop, like around 10 bash scripts that after one month, I was not able to understand. I, I mean, I wrote them, but it was too complex. And every time I go to a different place or in a different situation where I needed something special, it was a real mess to configure my networking. Okay, but that was the past. Then uh, some people say we should do something and they created Network Manager. And Network Manager came to stay. So basically there are two reasons why they created Network Manager. Enterprise Linux users were asking for modern solutions. They were asking for a tool that could deploy in their systems and then share configuration files and then everything would work or even they could detect uh, why, uh, in which network they, they are connecting, and then they could um, connect automatically to, to, that, uh, to that network. And then also, uh, it's the year of uh, Linux desktop, yet again. And people in laptops or the desktop, they do not want to use bash scripts to configure they know working. They just want to plug their cable and have internet connection. And I understand that. So they created a network manager that was around 18 years ago. So please, when you complain about network manager, have in mind that some parts of the code is probably 18 years old. All right. So the principles of network manager. I think I have been reading during this talk uh, some documentation, and I noticed that there are basically two things that we repeat all the time in the documentation, is that our focus is make networking configuration and setup painless and automatic as possible. And then also to allow customized and high level of manual network control, if the user decides that. And as you can notice, this is a little bit contradictory because in one point we say you don't need to do anything, and in the other hand we say you need to do everything. But it's only optional. So this way, uh, promoting this, we can allow the users that do not want to deal with the network configuration to just plug the cable and have internet connection. But in the other hand, for the network engineers, they allow them to configure their complex stuff and to customize their uh, uh, environment. In the end, we can say that it's just networking that just works. But sometimes it doesn't. We are, we are going to go for that later. Okay, uh, now is, to, is 2023 and cloud. Cloud is everywhere. Everyone is using cloud. Um, you have OpenStack, you have OpenShift, you have container, virtual machines, uh, container over virtual machines, virtual machines over containers, containers over containers, virtual machines over virtual machines. But the most important thing here is that you have networking everywhere. You have networking to communicate the virtual machines, the containers, uh, the containers inside the virtual machines are long, 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 etc. So, um, 
we need to adapt network manager to that situation because uh, people is used to network manager and they start using, uh, I don't know, OpenStack, OpenShift, and they want to continue using the same tool that they did on uh, the distribution. So we need to adapt some things. Um, basically, also, uh, we have, every, every, everybody knows about public cloud providers, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, um, Google, I think Alibaba also, there are plenty of them. And we have also some tools uh, to configure network manager there. So um, this is our future. The future is that we are going to continue working in network manager, focusing on cloud, because all the enterprise networking is now on cloud, and we cannot stay behind that. So what efforts are we doing? Uh, in first place, we have an NCloud setup. An NCloud setup is a tool that automatically configure the network of the VMs in public cloud. Basically, if you uh, uh, launch this, you have a VM in Amazon Web Service, for example, I don't know, an EC2 East instance, you can run this, uh, uh, this script, and then you will get uh, all the interfaces connected with the IPs and everything that's needed to work. That's uh, really useful for people that need a quick setup. Obviously, if you are doing something special, probably you need to do some customization later. Then we are reducing the gaps between EF, EF CFG, and Network Manager. Uh, we know that a lot of people is still using if config and network scripts and all of that. And we would like them uh, year by later to come to Network Manager. So um, we are trying to reduce the gaps between uh, if config and uh, sorry, between EF, CFG, and Network Manager so they can have all the features they need in Network Manager also. And then we also are doing efforts on NMS Day, Kubernetes NMS Day, and NM Policy. I'm going to talk in more detail later about uh, them. But in general, they are tools focused on cloud and cluster environments. Right, so recently we introduced some features that I consider that they are quite great and they are quite related to uh, cloud environments. We, for example, support global DNS configuration and this is something really useful for OpenShift uh, people. This is why we did it, because they were asking for it. Also, the IPv4 ECMP support uh, for routes, it's quite uh, um, useful there too. Uh, we have been extending OBS and OBS DPDK support because um, in OpenStack, almost everything is software-defined network and they use OBS and OVN everywhere. So this was basically a must and the users of OpenStack that they want to integrate Network Manager were asking for this. And then we are also introducing new things like uh, multipath TCP or MPTCP. So MPTCP, it's quite present in the kernel in the stable way, and probably it's going to be used more and more in the future. And this is not strictly related to uh, cloud, but probably, uh, the people that are going to set up uh, services with support with MPTCP, they are going to do it in cloud environments. So it's nice to have it there because they could do it using Network Manager. Right, so <clears throat> we continue with our efforts and then we create NMSD. So NMSD is a library uh, with a command line tool that manage host networking uh, in a declarative manner. So that means when you are working with NMSD, you don't need to specify what do you want to do or, or how do you want to do it. Sorry, you need to specify how do you want to do it. You need to specify what. So you describe a state, apply it, and NM state will do all the work. So NM state communicates with Nevo Manager. In the end, what NM state does is generate a key file for Nevo Manager and apply it to the system using the checkpoints, using the rollbacks, and other uh, network Manager features. And in order, so, so the idea is that the user doesn't need to understand the internals of Network Manager, and also the user doesn't need to understand the interdependencies between the uh, interfaces. So when you configure interfaces, there are some interdependencies, like the DNS, routes. Uh, if it is a link aggregation interface, like a bonding, uh, you need to configure the port, et cetera, et cetera. So this is done automatically by NM state, which is quite great because people in cloud need to deploy in large, large environments. 
and they need something that is declarative and a tool is going to do all the work. They, don't, they shouldn't resolve all the dependency and interdependencies of the networking interfaces for each cluster. That is almost impossible for a system administrator that is working in a big environment. So just to say also, uh, NMS state is written in Rust. So, and, and we created uh, C bindings. And with the C bindings, we have uh, Python and Golan bindings. So that boosts uh, our adoption uh, because Kubernetes people were able to basically uh, use our API directly in Golang, and that was a very big benefit for them. Right, we also have a Linux network system role, which is an Ansible role that enables users to configure their network on the Titan machines, and it uses Network Manager. And recently, we introduced uh, NMS state, and using the NMS state schema and, and API, so now they can basically, if they, they are used to uh, NMS state, they can copy their, st their state, they can copy their API and use it, on, uh, use it on the Ansible role if they need to deploy it with Ansible, which is a great, great benefit. Also, it's a great benefit because when we develop something in NMS state, network role is immediately getting that feature. And that's quite good because I, I don't need to, well, we don't need to do double work and we don't need to double test it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, then we have NM policy. Uh, NM policy is uh, an expression driven uh, declar uh, declarative API for dynamic uh, network configuration. That's some weird. Yeah, but the idea here is that we found out that there were some cases in which uh, we couldn't use pure declarative states. For example, if you have a uh, a big cluster and you want uh, to configure an interface depending on the state of another interface, that is not, not possible with a, a, static API, <clears throat> a static API. So what they did here is basically build, uh, they built in, in top of NMS state another tool that they get as an input a uh, desired state of NMS state and then they get a policy specification. So with these two things, they can build a different, um, uh, different network state for another cluster. And this way they can, in, they mainly use this in OpenShift, they can uh, configure uh, dynamic networking uh, with uh, NMS state by using NM policy. This is mainly focused on cluster because if you are configuring a VM or your own laptop with NMS state, probably it's enough. But if you are in big, in, in big clusters, this is really, really, really useful. And also, this is getting into uh, Fedora Core S. Um, yeah. And the sysadmins are now happy. So they don't end up on this situation. But yeah, uh, no, that's not the <laughs> reality. We have some problems, and we need to solve them. So first of all, Sometimes there are problems. Uh, network manager is not a perfect software, neither NM state or network role or NM policy. And sometimes there are bugs, and sometimes your driver is not uh, compatible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they need to debug it. And we have a problem is that the logs of network manager are quite hard to debug. I'm not sure if someone have ever tried to solve a problem and needed to do journal CTL uh, network manager, and then found out a big, big, big log with a lot of information that is really, really hard to debug. And we uh, we are working on ideas uh, to solve this problem. We are working on, on possible solutions. We have some internal scripts that, for example, colorize the logs, and they are a little bit better. But we need a better solution, and we are working on that. Uh, then people ask questions. And we reply them, but we didn't have a uh, frequent uh, questions section in our web page, and we should, because uh, I have been working in this team for almost uh, three and a half years, and I had questions when I started. Then I noticed that other people had the same questions, and I re replied to them. And then day to day, I'm getting the same questions, and I need to reply them but then they get lost in the middle of mailing list. 
So I think we should create some uh, knowledge base in our web page with uh, frequent questions and the solution. So probably that is going to help uh, a lot uh, the users. And then they, we have another problem. It's when we support something, we support it forever or for a long time. So um, I know that everyone has their own special case and it's a valid case, but we cannot support everything forever because it requires a great effort on uh, developer side, a great effort on uh, QE side, a great effort on documentation side. So we cannot do everything. And we need to design a third party network manager planning system. We have already one, but it's not good at all. And we should create one system that could allow, uh, could allow uh, some um, developer to create their own plugin and then they have their own uh, third party network manager plugin. It will integrate with network manager and they can do all the, the they, they can, um, um, yeah, they can complete the uh, special case or they can solve the, the, the special problem. So yeah, uh, so that's, uh, that's all. Uh, I would like to hear your opinion a little bit, if possible, or, or your opinion on network manager and the current networking status, or if you have any um, question. Thank you. Any questions? Give me one moment. Aha. Sorry? Oh. It's, no. The can you repeat the question so that it's, yeah. Or I can handle this for. Yeah, yeah. And just, no, so the, the problem is that we do not have this frequent question page. And basically, we do not have it because we didn't do it. <laughs> why? Why? why but, Right. So then you are working, you are working a bug, you are coding, and then you get a question from someone, you reply to the email, and forget about it. You, you don't think, hmm, this is a frequent question, I should put it on this place. We should do that. I mean, this is our, we did our uh, job, but in that situation, we should have done, done it. Because I think especially it could help to non-technical users, because we noticed that there are a lot of non-technical network manager uses. Basically, other people that use network manager with their Linux distribution, and they just plug their cable, and it works. And sometimes they have problem, and they are not able to debug it. So probably this this kind of page page could have a lot. And we have a work in progress to, to have. So we are it's uh it's we are going to have it soon. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, Michelle online asks, uh, can this be used with System D Network D? Sorry? Can this be used with System D Network D? Uh, I mean, I'm not familiar with uh, System D Network D. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Network Manager, not, not sure if they, they uh, have conflicts, but I, I don't know. I mean, usually when you have a system that is configuring and working, it's better to only have one system right. because then you have two systems touching the interfaces and the configuration all the time, and probably something is going to go wrong. Any more questions? In the past, uh, in the, in the past uh, there was just some pre-config list of, uh, for I mean, for mobile connections, but it's not anymore. I, I didn't read about that. I mean, maybe it's in the docs or somewhere mm -hmm. in some forum. But uh, you know why? What, what's the reason? Because now we have to go directly to check in our provider, the APN name and all this data, which is also sometimes. No, uh, that's a great concern. So uh, we can follow up later because I think that's going to be an extensive <laughs> uh, discussion. But yeah, I think, I, I don't know why. I mean, there should be a reason and they should be in the docs or in the news file. And if not, it's a bug. <laughs> so, and it shouldn't. <laughs> Um, 
yeah, uh, we can talk about that later. Thank you. Uh, is there is any plan to include more uh, VPN technologies within the configuration for Network Manager? Like WireGuard, I know that it used to be a plugin, a separate plugin for OpenVPN, for example. Sorry? There is already one for WireGuard now? Oh, okay. Oh, I agree. I thought there is, and I don't know about it. Oh, my God. So, I don't know if there are plans. I don't think so, that there are plans currently. But uh, it is, if it, this is what they said. If it is a great idea, uh, community like it, we see value on the idea, we can uh, promote it and maybe do it. We can study the idea. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, but I think there is one more question. <laughs> Uh, so you talked about NM state and NM policy, and during those descriptions of those things, to me it kind of sounded like you duplicated what the network manager base configuration format does, just put it in one file rather than three. Any thoughts of maybe instead of another thing that does a thing that wraps on top of a thing, maybe make the thing itself actually do the thing you want? Like, it'd be nice to have a simplified configuration format in Network Manager itself that everything could work with rather than making things on top of it because uh, yes. this is like the sixth one of those that I know of. Yeah, yes. This is basically a situation in which you see a standard and you say, hmm, I could do better. And then there is one more standard to the other 100 that already exists. Right, that's correct. But our initial idea was that we wanted to do with NM state the final tool that unify everything is and then, static. Sorry? The final thing is static, though, not dynamic. Right. But then this is, we didn't consider the dynamic situation for class, V clusters. And that, that is how we end up. But if I, I think there are um, good things for the NM state and NM policy being built on top of Network Manager, it's a basically they can use each other. And yes, everything could be in the same. Uh, repository, then you end up with systemd, uh, something like the systemd or big as systemd. It's hard. Um, I think the benefits of having them independently is that, for example, uh, the uh, development is completely different. I mean, the people that is developing NM policy are not the same that are developing NM state, and they are not the same that are developing network manager. And they collaborate uh, between them, uh, and they get all the context. context. But they are written in different languages. They have different scopes. They, one of them try to aim for clusters and is focused on cluster and ignore the other things. I mean, one could say that uh, NMS state could be integrated in Network Manager, but then there are some people that they have uh, containers and they have the services split between containers and probably they would like to run the NMS state service in another container and not on not a network manager container. I mean, there are a lot of situations. When you start working with uh, enterprise networking, you end up discovering quite weird situations that you need to support. And this is how, that, that's what's the, the resolution. You frightened me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Have you, have you considered using chat GPT to help you write the FAQ? <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, ha have you considered using chat GPT to help you write the frequently asked questions? Just by asking it to see it, if it's read the mailing list or not. We didn't consider it. Just a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. It could be interesting, but uh, when... It started, I tried to say ChatGPT configure an Ethernet interface with NM state, and the result was quite quite bad. It was like NM state dot configure Ethernet, and it was this doesn't even exist. I mean, NM state use YAML states. Why is this generating a command line command? And when you ask something for network manager, it doesn't work at all. Maybe in the future, if the it is smart. 
Yeah, of course, we could with all our internal emails. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe we end up with a CV in our uh, question <laughs> web page. No, I, I think uh, we, we do not consider it yet, but who knows, maybe in the future. Really? Okay. That's great. Okay, that's great. Okay, maybe we should consider it. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. Oh, sorry. Not trying to cut you off, but I'm going to cut you off. So, yeah. All right, thanks again. Thank you.